Let's move on to the tour problem. The tour problem that we all know about. Um, and that is obviously another concussion for Tua Tungavailo, a quarterback for the Miami Dolphins, which is now it is his fourth con- concussion in six years, which he had got against the Bills in that Thursday night football game. Obviously, that was a fair few days ago now. Um, but it's still very relevant because there's not a lot of information out there at the minute of what's going forward with this, Johnny. Um, you know, this is the third in since he's been in the NFL. Um and it's it's worrying times. I mean, the questions have been bandied around about his, his potential retirement, if the NFL should be stepping in. Uh, I mean, what's your take on all this stuff with Tua over in Miami? Yeah, it's incredibly difficult. And obviously, wish Tua the you know, full recovery. I think this this has obviously hampered his career. And, you know, despite getting a, a long-term contract this, this off-season, there have been, I think, question marks over his... Um, you know, uh, longevity and whether he is the, the franchise quarterback for the, for the Dolphins. He obviously doesn't intend to retire. You know, that's that's his decision. He wants to make his his his, his career work. But, uh, it, you know, we've got to consider the, the human and, and health aspects here. And uh, yeah, like you say, he's had multiple major concussions now. Um, you know, I don't think we know the full... Um, um, you know, outcome of, of the one that he suffered against the Bills and how long he's going to be out for. But he's going to, you know, he should be out for a, a, a long period of time because um, you know he missed, uh, I think, a few games last year and um, certainly a, a lot more the year before. So um, you know, to suffer major concussions in three separate seasons um, is going to do some some really serious long term um, uh, damage. I think you know that's. That's not, you know, no medical background, but that, you know, that's just what history tells you, unfortunately. Um, so, you know, I think there has to be a, a point. And obviously, there are a lot of calls from certain uh, former players, former NFL doctors who say he, he should retire. Um, it's, yeah, whether or not the NFL gets involved, you know, I can't see that happening, unfortunately. It's, you know, a sad reality. You know, I'm all praying for that, that that Tua makes a full recovery and can continue his career. But, um, but yeah, concussions are, are, are such a difficult, um, you know, brain health, such a difficult um, topic um, that, you know, he's obviously going to be giving advice and um, a treatment from the, the, the best possible medical experts. Um, but, you know, I'd be very concerned if, you know, Tua was... Um, you know, from a purely human aspect, if two was my my brother, my son, my my dad, and you know, watching him, um, you know, go out in the field and and, and consistently pick up these sort of injuries, um, you know, it, it must be such a worrying thing for his family. And mm. yeah, I think you know, ultimately, it's it's, it's going to be to his decision whether he he um, he retires. And I think you know, the the the, the human aspect of it will obviously be. Um, what it comes down to, but uh, but yeah, wish him all the best and hope he makes a full recovery. But uh, uh yeah, it's really worrying signs for for, for two and another you know another concussion incident in the NFL. There obviously um, needs to be more conversations about what more we can do. Um, you know the 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 um, um I can't remember the exact name of what the 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 helmets that they use in in um, um in in training camp, but whether that's you know an option for, for, for actual games uh, to, you know, potentially minimise or uh, reduce the, the the impact that these players are, are going through because, you know, the NFL is a sport like no other. Um, and, you yeah, know, the, the NFL just has to do, do, do a lot more on this, unfortunately. Yeah, I, I mean, I've seen James Daniels, the offensive guard for, for uh, the Steelers. He has sort of a cover of his helmet now, which I don't know what yeah. that is about, but maybe it's potentially to do with something to do with that. Um, James, yeah, I mean, if I, well, a great thing that his, his coach McDaniel said over, you know, was, you know, we're not talking about retirement, we're talking about the human being here, we're talking about, you know, his health first. And that's, you know, we don't, we're not worried about the re- any sort of gossip of retirement or anything like that. It's, it's about the player that's under the helmet and the person in there. Um, but it, it does well down that, you know, f- football is a physical game. It is a physical game and these things will happen. The problem is, is the consistency of these things happening to one, you know, to a particular individual. Um, yeah. You know, concussions, I'm sure, are a lot more frequent than maybe we are maybe led to believe 
in the NFL. Um, yeah. I don't know about the frequency within individual players, but I think the the rate of them is a lot more is higher than people than they probably than, than teams announced and they let on. Um, so does this is this cause for? I mean, could they and should they with the NFL uh, get involved in this and and be sort of this mitigating party with Miami and, and with Tour about the future? Because for them, I mean, you know, with, with the rate of how our talk is with CTE now, which is such a such a huge topic and also you know such a relevant and uh, a relevant topic for for all sports athletes, let alone NFL players. Um, is there it is a responsibility by the 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 sort of um the board of the of, of nfl the the overseeing body of it to be involved in this well you would think that there is um but it's whether or not they want to be involved whether they want to leave these massive decisions up to the teams and and up to the individuals um, if we go back and we sort of think about the injuries that, that he's had, so week three versus the Bills in 2022, we got a hit from Matt Milano, fell back, hit his head on the ground, and that was deemed a non-concussion. You know, we went through the protocols and it was deemed he was fine. The very next week, week four versus the Bengals, same thing happened, tackled, head hit the ground, and that's where we had the, the real sort of major concern one where the hands spasmed and he, he looked to be in... in in a bad way um he got one on christmas day i think it was week 16 against the packers again hitting his head on the ground after a tackle and it's so it's not just everybody thinks it's, it's going to be that helmet to helmet contact it's not when you're being thrown around there's so many different ways you know you think these these surfaces aren't all grass there isn't the same amount of give in the artificial surfaces if it, if any of them have been done on them i think one or two have um and so the, the league has to, at some point, think about stepping in and saying, OK, we we really need to review what's going on here because we can't have somebody having the worst that could happen on the field. You know, a freak incident like the DeMar Hamlin thing a few years ago, there's nothing you can do about that because there's no prior warning. You can't see that coming. This is something that builds and an accumulation of, of trauma over the time, you know, and this is the thing with, with concussions, usually it's not just one impact, it's an accumulation of hits. And then, so the biggest hit to begin with might seemingly do nothing, but the third or fourth blow, which seems smaller later on, that can be as significant, if not more impactful than the others, because that is the trigger blow. Um, and, you also have to think about susceptibility of individuals. You know, not everyone is built the same. Not everyone can take the same. You know, you think about combat sports, for example, like boxing. Boxers saying to each other, oh, he's got a better or worse chin than this guy. Well, you know, it, if you're judging it on people's ability to take a, a, a powerful blow to the head, you know, surely guys in the nfl are the same okay they've got that level of protection there in the helmet but if you are susceptible in any way to this sort of injury um then that's only going to get worse over time and as johnny said if you're any sort of relation to tour as well and if you you know the, these organizations talk really well about these players about how much they love them and how much they invest in them and everything else you know if you really care at some point you are going to have to sit down and say look we, we need to have a conversation here about whether you can carry on because one more blow and you know we could be we could be left with a, a, a yeah. major life-changing injury and I, and I don't mean to sound callous but it, there is that monetary thing as well like I, i'm sorry yeah. I, I know it's, it's kind of, of safe, but you know this is for them guys business you know as well and, yeah. and you know maybe maybe even miami are looking at this now and going you know from a monetary side you know they're, they they yeah, it was a four-year extension with 212 million 167 guaranteed. I have got an article um, just in case we need to refer to anything via the uh, Morning Star of America, um, published by uh, Western Blessing, if uh, that is what I'm pronouncing. But I may refer to if, if we get on to sort of what they can do and what they can't do. But that is that is a factor, James. Unfortunately, it is, isn't it? For this, yeah, of course. For this organization as well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you would like to think it's not going to be the biggest factor, but it's yeah. definitely going to be 
there and the conversations are going to be had um and it is unfortunate but it, it, it is a business as well now and the other the other thing that again going back if you're tour and your tour's family and, and everything else you'd be saying you know you, you're probably pretty much set for life and if you get out now you can continue working in the sport in other capacities you could go into coaching you could go into punditry you know you can move in in different areas you take one more hit and suddenly you sound you know like boxers sound punch drunk or you end up in a worse situation like a you know like a muhammad ali or something of that that nature further down the line you you know you're not going to be able to do anything that you love with the game you're just going to sit and and unfortunately have to watch life pass you by um and it, it makes you think about other players where they should have stepped in earlier as well i mean he never had the same level of supposed um or reported injuries but somebody like antonio brown i think antonio brown and and tua tonga are wired very, very differently very, very, anyway. very, very different people but, yeah <laughs> but at the same time you can't you, you, we will be slightly amiss to just completely disregard what's happened to somebody like antonio brown and not wonder if massive impacts trauma and stuff that he's taken probable concussions haven't impacted you know his character in some way and the way that he functions day to day um and the, the you know the dis questionable decisions that he makes and and so you you know again i think you've got to be wired in a slightly different way to go that way anyway and and that's not too he seems like a really pretty level-headed down to earth you know very nice kind of guy you don't hear a lot about him he's not a very flashy showy kind of quarterback he's you know most off seasons you just see him going about his work and he seems pretty pretty content um so hopefully the right decisions will be made but yeah the nfl is gonna have to if not it's if it's not already having serious conversations about what if because mm -hmm. if Tua comes back in a couple of weeks time when he really oh, or to, man, in all man, likelihood man. shouldn't be and suffers I mean, man, if, if, he, if, if he doesn't come back this week he won't come back this weekend i don't think but if he comes back next weekend and then in three or four weeks it happens again gee johnny like yeah it, it, that's, yeah. that's it, nfl's worst case scenario isn't it really yeah of course it is so the, you know um i can't remember what they you know the concussion protocols are but you know talking about it i'm someone who's it, suffered it, it, concussion it says, playing it says here that um, to be medically cleared for game action, uh, the head injury must complete a five-step protocol, medical evaluated by team doctors and independent neurologists, but the decision whether or not to return the field is up to the player and his own yeah. doctor. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Yeah. There, there, there has to be stronger laws on, on concussion. Um, you know, I was about to say, I've suffered concussions playing, um, playing sports, and, you know, if you suffer one, it was you know, a month off. Um, even if, you know, you were, I suppose, medically clear that you weren't, um, you know, you weren't carrying a concussion after a certain amount of time. The coach wouldn't play you, or you know, you were told not to, you know, be acting. That's talking from, you know, the very basic of of, of, of amateur sport. We're talking about, you know, the the biggest humans making the biggest contacts um, in, you know, probably one of the most physical sports um, in the world. Um, surely there has to be. You know, stronger laws, a stronger baseline, and um, that you know it's not up to the players now. This is, <laughs> you know, you can't come back un until you've passed, you know, four games or you know however long, um, because you know whether or not you've made a speedy recovery or whatever, there's always the chance that you're going to you know re-injure yourselves. And like I say, there is, you know, there's no second chance. I don't think with 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 brain health and um, and concussions. Um, yeah, you're only going to be doing more damage um, if if you if, if if you if you come back and you know I really want to see Tua come back, but it's got to be done to the, the safest um, uh, means necessary. And um, yeah, I, I, the NFL has to has to strengthen um, its 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 laws and concussions. Whether or not it will, you know, unfortunately, I, I, it, it's it's you know this is a, a sport where um, it's it's all about making money. Um, which is the sad, really sad thing about about it. But you know, cushions is something. You know, I think you know, as a collective, as as, as pundits, we all think very. You know, we have very strong.
beliefs are, uh, about it. And um, yeah, I, I, you know, how many how many more of these types of injuries is it going to take for the the NFL to um, you know strengthen its its laws and um, and and like you know, like James says, it's it's about franchises who who say they they care about their you know star players uh, being able to step up and and you know um, make the decisions for the the players to to say no you know you're, you're um, even if you're medically cleared you, we're not playing you this week. Mm. Yeah, it's certainly something we're going to have to keep an eye on in the future for Tua Tonga Vailoa. So we are obviously over here wishing him all the best of luck in his future and hopefully um, this all gets cleared out very soon.